Amen. 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 Um, well, man, I have a wonderful word from the Lord tonight to share. And even as I was praying, the Lord um, instructed me a, a couple of different places to start first. So let's go first to John chapter one. And I'm just going to flow with him here and just let him take us where he's going to take us. Um, it's going to be wonderful and it's going to be powerful. Oh, it's going to be amazing. So let's look at John chapter one. And let's look at chapter one and let's look at verse one. Okay. Now, in the beginning was the word. Okay. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning. In the beginning was the word. Okay, now, we know this scripture, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, okay, now, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, okay, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning was the word. So what does that tell us? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Okay, now, all things were made by him. Okay, wait a minute. Him who? Him God? Well, yes, him God. But who is the understood subject that's being talked about here? It's the word. Oh, man, this is good. This is good. Okay, now listen. In the... Oh, man. Okay. Okay. In the... Okay. Just... All right. Just, just, just listen. Just hang on for a minute. Just listen. Okay. Just, just hold on. Okay, just, okay, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, just hang on a minute, okay, hang on, okay, just hold on, just, oh, this is ridiculous, okay, 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 <clears throat> Okay, just hold okay, just hold on a second. <laughs> just hold on. Okay. 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 Sorry about that. I'm better. Okay. So, okay, in the okay. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. I'm sorry. And the, and the, no. Okay. I can say it right. 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so the very next okay now verse three all things were made by him him who him the word in the beginning was the word in the beginning god the word created the heaven and the earth okay in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god And all things were made by him, the word. Okay? And watch this. Without him, the word, okay, without him, the word, okay, without the word, was not anything made that was made. And yet, we constantly keep trying to make things and create things in our life without the Word of God. Oh. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things were made by the word. <clears throat> There's such mighty, wonderful, creative power in the word of God. <clears throat> all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made can I look at verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, now go to Mark 11. Are you hanging in here with me? Okay, just hang with me here. I'm going someplace here. I mean, I assume we are. I'm off the script right now, but that's okay. So verse 22, and Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. Now, just let's just remember this now. This right here, this single statement, have faith in God. This single statement alone is the answer to every single problem, every single challenge, every single situation that we will ever come up against. That's it right there. I hear, this, I hear people say this all the time. There's some old preacher from way back years ago, and he would say, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. <laughs> and I said, wow, that's an amazing statement. He said, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. I said, well, I mean, that's like, wow. So I don't have any problems. All I need is faith in God. And that faith in God is the answer. And it's the solution. 
to any problem that tries to come against him. Wow. I just need to think about that for a minute. You don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. See, and the, the, the carnal mind will try to say, wait a minute, that, that's not true. Whoa, you can't say that. I don't have any problems. You don't know my life. You don't know what I'm going through. And see, I get it. Because that's what our natural mind wants to go right to us. Wait a minute. That, no, wait a minute. I have, I do, I have, oh, they, I have, I have problems. Oh, let me tell you, I've got some problems. Let me tell you about all my problems. We want to, like, take a bath in these problems and just roll around in them and talk about them all the time. And look at them all the time and think about them all the time and analyze them. Oh, boy, are we good. I mean, let me tell you, I am good. Oh, well, we can really analyze some problems. What if, what if instead of us wasting all this time analyzing and analyzing and analyzing and scrutinizing and thinking about it, and looking at it, and talking about it, and just rolling all around in it, and just getting crazy in it. Like, what if instead we spend that amount of time meditating in the Word of God on Scripture that would answer that problem? I mean, I, I, man, I mean, I talk about that with Stacey all the time. We'll get here, we'll sit here, and then we'll spend half an hour. Oh, man, that irks me. I think it irks the Lord, really, is what that I'm sensing right there. I mean, it irks me, too. But, man, you'll sit there and you'll waste this time talking about a problem. And, I, and then I'll say, I'll say, man, what if we would have taken that half an hour and been meditating in the Word of God and been talking about the Word of God and the solution? Instead of this problem. And look, it's not about it's not about coming down on ourselves here or coming down on, on you know, condemning. No, no, it's not about any of that. But I'm just saying, hey, wait a minute now. You, you don't have any problems. <laughs> All you need is faith in God. Okay, man, this is, okay, we're going to come back to this. Go with me, please, to first, I think it's first Peter. Um, it's either, well, it might be second Peter, but it's in one of the Peters. I think it's probably second. No, it's first Peter, I think. Okay, Lord, yep, yeah, there it is, okay. Um, so 1 Peter chapter 1, verse, um, verse 20, uh, let's see. Okay, let's start. Well, okay, man. Okay, let's start in verse 18, please. Um, For as much as you know 
that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. Okay. Um, so, in other words, perishable things. Um, in other words, temporary things. Um, in other words, things that can be destroyed, things that um, can be broken. Um, so, so you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. So he's saying the precious blood of Christ is incorruptible. It's, it's eternal, okay? Now, um, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Okay. But was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Now, that unfeigned, that's a weird word. That's a word we, we would we would not say words like that. You know, that's, you know, it's just the way this old English, or what do they call it, Elizabethan English, whatever they call it. I mean, it's, it just means unfeigned, means like feigned would be like fake or pretend. So it's like genuine, genuine love, not pretend to love, not fake love. Um, So, uh, through unfeigned love of the brethren, unto, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, genuine love, we'll say. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Okay, here we go. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God. Okay which lives and abides forever, okay? Now, what he's saying here is that we were, we were born again, or I would say we were created, because if you're born, you were created. So we were created not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Um, in other words, um, not perishable, um, not something that can be destroyed, not something that can die, um, not, not something that can be tar tarnished or, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's incorruptible. It's, it's eternal. It lasts forever. It, it never goes away. Okay, now that, okay, that is what you, that is what you were created from. So if you were created by the word of God, then it would make sense that everything in your life that you are going to create is going to be created by the word of God. Okay, now go back um, again to Mark chapter 11. Okay, now Mark chapter 11, again, and Jesus answering, saith unto them, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, 
but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever <clears throat> he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So when you pray for those things that you desire, do you have them at that moment? So if you don't have it at that moment when you pray, then something is going to need to be created in order for you to receive it. And how that is created is right here in John 1, when in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things, verse 3, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. I want to read this again. Go back one more time to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Incorruptible what? Incorruptible seed. By the word of God. So what he's saying here is he's saying the word of God is incorruptible, precious seed, more precious than gold, than silver, and diamonds, ah, more, more precious than anything that exists in this world. So the word of God is precious, incorruptible seed. And that is how we create with the precious, incorruptible seed of the word of God. You say, well, where do we create? How do we do that? Well, we do it by what we just read in Mark 11. Whosoever shall say unto the mountain, Be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Okay. Go with me, please, over to Mark chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 3. Hearken. 
Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground. Now, just notice this here for a minute at the very start of verse four. It says, well, just, okay, verse three, behold, there went out a sower to sow, okay? So now here we have the picture of a sower that's going out to sow. He's gonna plant some seed in the soil, right? He's gonna plant some seed in the soil. So they went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed. So now here we have the sower. He's gone out to sow. And now he's sowing as he sows. So now he's sowing. He's sowing the seed. He's out there. He's planting the seed. However, however, now this is back in the days where, you know, they didn't have tractors. They didn't have planters like we have now. You know, so I don't know what he was using. Maybe he was using his hands. Maybe he was using a bucket. You know, maybe they had some other kind of tool that they used, but whatever he was doing, he was sowing some seed right now. He was sowing the seed out into the ground. Okay, well, this is interesting. Okay, um, so. It came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. I'm going to take my time on this. So I'm not going to rush through this. I'm going to take my time here. So some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and they devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. In other words, it was very shallow ground. Um, it wasn't deep soil. There, there was some soil there but it was very shallow and there were rocks and, and, and hard ground underneath it. So that seed couldn't go down deep to where it needs to go. So it went down that little bit that it could in that shallow ground and then it sprang up quickly. And when the sun was up, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. See, <clears throat> see, that seed, it was planted in shallow ground. And so what happened was it, it, the ground wasn't deep enough to where it could get down and, and create some roots, okay? Because what happens is then when, when that seed can get down deep into the soil, and then it can start to grow some roots. What can happen then is now those roots can start drawing nutrients from the soil. Those roots can begin bringing in moisture, bringing in water and moisture into itself to feed itself, to give itself the nutrients, the, the moisture, the water, the, the the water that it needs to grow and to live. And because the ground was very shallow, it sprang up quickly and the sun scorched it. In other words, the sun dried it out because it couldn't get any moisture from the ground. And then some fell among thorns, in verse 7. And the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Another fell on good ground 
and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased. And brought forth some 30, some 60, some 100. Now, he said unto them, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Do you ever think about why he said that? I mean, he just said it all. What is that about? He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Weren't they all here? Weren't they all there listening to them? Weren't they all hearing what he was saying? See, they were all there and they were all hearing what he was saying. But they were not all receiving into their hearts what he was saying. See, we can hear things, but not really hear it. Have you ever had somebody say something to you? And you say, yeah, okay. And then 10 minutes later, they follow up on what they just said to you. And you say, what are you talking about? You never said that to me. See? Excuse me. So you heard them. I mean, you acknowledged what they said, but you didn't hear them. What they said did not go into your heart. You did not freely receive it into your heart. And that's, that's how it can be with the word of God. You ever, you ever sat down and you're reading the Bible? And you read, maybe you just read a, a few paragraphs, maybe you read a chapter, maybe you read a whole page or two. And then you sit there and you say to yourself, What did I even just read? I don't even know what I just read. See, you were, you, were, you were hearing it, but you weren't really hearing it. So, I mean, why... Well, let me read this. I'll go to verse 11. He said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. So they were hearing, but they weren't understanding it. They were seeing, but they weren't perceiving, like, well, wait a minute, what is this? They were hearing, but not understanding. They were seeing it, but yet they couldn't comprehend what was being discussed. Well, why? Well, why is that? Why? why? I mean, hear Jesus. <laughs> Here is Jesus expounding the word of God to them. Oh, how glorious. I mean, there's all kinds of people there that aren't getting it. They're just hearing words. That's it. They're just hearing words. Why? I'm going to kind of skip ahead here, but if you look at verse 24, he says it again in verse 23. If anybody has ears to hear, let him hear. 
And he said, take heed what you hear with what measure you meet. Okay, in other words, the measure that you use, the measure that you are, are measuring this by, okay? So according to the measure that you use, it'll be measured back to you. So in other words, according to the value that you place upon the word of God, that is the accordance to which you will hear and receive it and understand it. So you could say it this way. The greater value that you place upon the word of God, the greater level to which you will hear and see and understand. The greater level to which revelation will be revealed to you. We can say it this way. The greater degree to which answers will be opened up to you. Isn't that wonderful? So the greater the greater the value that you place upon the word of God, the greater degree to which your answers come. The greater degree to which revelation flows into your mind and into your heart. Because revelation knowledge is really what makes the difference. Anybody can open up the Bible and just read it. And it can just be words to them. Anybody can do that. Anyway. But it's when the Holy Spirit takes those words that are on the page and opens them up to you so that you can see, oh, that's what's going on. Okay, I understand that now. Oh, that makes so much sense now. See, that is when the word comes alive because the word of God, it is alive. It is powerful. It is sharper than any sword that you could ever use. Dividing the soul and the spirit. So the greater the level of value that you place upon the word of God, whether that be when you're hearing it preached, whether that be when you're reading it in your Bible, whether that be when you're speaking it out of your mouth, the greater level of value. Um, you could say that the... the the greater the level of honor that you place upon the word of God. That's, that's what opens up your understanding. Okay, let's keep reading here. Um, now verse 13, he says this. He says, and he said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? 
In other words, when he says, no, you're not, he's saying, don't you understand? He's like, don't, don't you understand this parable that I just explained to you about the sower? <laughs> if, you, if you can't understand this parable of the sower, well, then, my goodness, how are you going to understand anything? How, 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 how are you going to understand anything about how the kingdom operates, about how the kingdom works, if you can't understand this parable? Because this parable regarding the sower it is a primary foundational concept for how the kingdom of God operates. Verse 14, the sower sows the word. Now, who sows the word? It says the sower. Now, so the sower is God. So is, is Jesus, is he the sower? Is he the one that's sowing the word? Well, no, I mean, he is the word. So you are the sower. So you are the one. I am the one. We are the ones that sow the word. So these are they by the wayside, where the word of God is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay? So I want you to hear that again. <clears throat> so these are the ones by the wayside. Okay. Now remember what the wayside was. The wayside was the very first one that he described that said some fell by the wayside and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. The birds. The birds came and ate the seed. Okay. So when they heard the word, when the word was sown, they heard the word and Satan came immediately and took away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, go with me to Luke chapter 8. I want, to, I, want you to, I want you to see Luke's account of this same passage, okay? Now, Luke chapter 8, and, okay, Luke chapter 8. Uh, okay. Well, let's first look at verse 5, just so you can see how he describes it first. So he says, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, or trampled on, and the birds came and devoured it up. So now, you look at verse 12. Those by the wayside are they that hear... Then comes the devil and takes away the word out of their hearts. Now watch this. Lest they should believe and be saved. Did you hear that now? So the word gets sown into their heart and immediately the devil comes and he just takes it. He steals it right out of their hearts. Because if he had not taken it out of their heart, then they would have believed and been saved. Wow. So 
So he came and took it out of their hearts. So now here we have a principle. Satan stole the word out of their heart. Otherwise, they would have believed. So here we have a principle that shows us in order for us to believe, we must have the word of God sown into our hearts. Because if the word of God is not into, in our hearts, then we cannot believe. Because they had the word, it got in their heart, but then Satan came and stole it out of their heart, and now they can't believe. Do you, do you see that? Okay, now let's go back to Mark, Mark chapter 4. You know what? Do this real quick. Go with me over to Matthew chapter 13 as well. I just want to show you Matthew's account of this as well. Now, you realize this now. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three of them give an account of this um, sermon that Jesus preached. I mean, is that how this is a this is an important message that Jesus delivered. Well, let's just do the same thing that we did in Luke. Let's in verse, let's start at verse. Well, let's say, okay. Verse four, he sowed, some fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured it up. Okay, now we go over to verse 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, okay, the, the word of the what? See, this is this is the word of the kingdom. This is these are our instructions as to how the kingdom operates. So when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, now whoa, listen to this. Now this is so powerful. Now I understand why the Lord took us over here. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, in other words, and doesn't understand it, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Okay? Now, Wow. So the word was sown. Now this is, again, this is the soil that, that it's scattered on the ground, but, but the birds came and ate it up right away. It was by the wayside. Okay. So what, what he's saying is they they heard the word, but they didn't understand what they were hearing. And so because they didn't understand what they were hearing, It was easily stolen away from them. Now, we know John chapter 10 and verse 10 says the thief comes not but for to steal, right? The thief, talking about the enemy, the thief comes to steal. And look what it says right here. It says, then comes the wicked one and snatches away 
the other trans the other the other accounts say he 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 took it away or he stole it right out of their heart. Okay, let's say a thief breaks into somebody's house, okay? If a thief breaks into somebody's house, what is he going to steal? Um, is he going to go in there and steal their trash? Is he going to go in there and steal their junk? Unless he's like some kind of a really odd, deranged criminal, probably, probably not, right? He's most likely, not even most likely, he is most assuredly going to go. If he breaks into somebody's house, he's going to go in there and he is going to find their most precious valuables. He's going to go in there and take their most precious values. And so when Satan comes to steal from you, what is he coming for? He's coming for your most precious, most valuable asset that you have. And that's the word of God. Do you see that? I mean, he's a thief, and when he comes to steal from you, what he wants to steal is the word of God. Could it be that the devil is placing a higher value on the word of God than we are? Think about that. He's going after your most precious, most valuable asset that you have. And that's the word of God sown into your heart. It's incorruptible. It's more precious than fine gold more precious than silver, more precious than anything you can come across. So my question is, how are we treating the word of God? How are we valuing the word of God? How precious is the word of God to us? Is the word, do we view the word of God as our most precious commodity? As the most valuable, most precious, most precious thing that we have? If we do, then we will reap huge dividends off of the word of God that is sown into our hearts. Huge. The level of value, the level of respect, the level of honor that you place upon the word of God will determine 
whether or not the enemy can steal it out of your heart. And whether it can be deeply planted and rooted in your heart so that it can produce. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, I feel the Lord stopping me here for now. Um, I have so much more. Um, I, didn't even, I, I didn't even get in. I got into my first two or three lines of notes. That was it. So we have a lot more to cover on this. Um, so I think we'll continue with this next week. There's just so much in here, and I really want us to take our time and really digest this properly um, so we're not just rushing through it but really letting it marinate in our hearts so father we thank you for your word tonight we thank you for the mighty 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 power of your word we thank you lord that your word is the incorruptible seed we thank you that your word is the incorruptible seed and father we endeavor to place a greater value upon your word, a greater level of honor upon your word. Lord, help us to honor your word as the single most important thing in our entire lives. Nothing coming before your word. Nothing more important than your word. Nothing more worthwhile to look at or think about than your word. So, Lord, we ask for this word tonight to be deeply rooted in our hearts so that it can produce wonderful, mighty harvest in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.